In this screencast, we're going to use the Reynolds transport theorem to analyze a moving control volume. In other words, we're going to use this integral form of the continuity equation. So a moving control volume is analyzed like a fixed one. However, we have to take into account that we can't use the velocity of the fluid entering and exiting the control volume through the control surfaces in our Reynolds transport theorem. Instead, we have to use a relative velocity that we'll call W. And the relative velocity is the fluid velocity seen by an observer moving with the control volume. So let's let V be what's known as the absolute velocity. And that's the velocity of the fluid seen by a stationary observer in the fixed coordinate system. And we're going to let V sub C V be the velocity of the control volume. In other words, the velocity at which the control volume is moving. And therefore, our relative velocity is going to be equal to our absolute velocity minus the velocity of the control volume. And that W here replaces the V here in our integral. So let's look at an example. So we have a car here, and the car is moving at 15 meters per second. And inside it has an engine, and we'll make the engine look like this, which of course it doesn't actually. And the engine has an intake area of the air here of 0 0.002 meters squared. And the exhaust exits the engine, so again here, at 25 meters per second. And its area, so we'll call this area 2, this is going to be equal to area 1. And its area is equal to 0 0.0014 meters squared. And what we want to know is how much fuel enters the engine in kilograms per second. So the air that's entering the engine, so here we'll call this row 1, is equal to 0 0.8 kilograms per meter cubed. And the exhaust density, so we'll call this row 2, is equal to 0 0.43 kilograms per meter cubed. So now let's go back to our governing equation. And let's simplify it. So the flow is steady state. So the first term is going to drop out. The velocities are uniform, so we can take the control surfaces out of the integral. So remember that we're looking for the mass flow rate of the fuel, which is equal. So our m dot of the fuel is going to be equal to the rho of the fuel, the velocity of the fuel dot n, times the area that the fuel goes into, which is just going to be equal to minus the mass of the fuel. And the reason that it's negative is that the velocity, which is going into the engine this way, dot n is equal to zero. Remember that n is the normal vector from the surface that the velocity is going into. Okay, so the next thing we have to do is write out the entire equation using, instead of our v here, we're going to use our w's. So this is going to be equal to our row 1 times our w1 dot n times a1 plus row 2 times our w2 dot n times a2 and 
the entire term is going to be equal to zero since mass is conserved. And so you can see that our, when we bring this term over to here, this, these two terms added together are going to equal the mass of the fuel. So let's start by finding our W1 and W2. So our W1 is going to be equal to V1 minus V of the control volume. Now our V of the control volume is the velocity of the car, and that's going to equal 15 meters per second. So let's again draw this engine. This is the intake. Okay, and so we have air that's coming in here, but it has, it doesn't have a velocity. We're going to assume it's still air. So our W1 is going to be equal to zero minus 15 meters per second. However, now we have to look at W1.n. And if you recall, here's the normal from the surface. So this is going to be equal to minus W1, which is going to be equal to 15 meters per second. So that's what's going to be this term. We're going to do the exact same thing coming out. So here we have the exhaust that's coming out. And so our W2 is going to equal V2 minus the velocity of the control volume. And if we go back to the problem, what we see is that the exhaust here leaves at 25 meters per second. So this W2 is going to be 25 meters per second minus 15 meters per second, and our W2 is 10 meters per second. Now here we have the normal from the surface there, so our W2.n is just equal to W2, which is equal to 10 meters per second. So now let's go ahead and put our values into our equation. So this is equal to our row 1 times our W1.n times our area 1. And we add to that our row 2, where row 1 is the entrance to the engine, and row 2 is the exit or the exhaust. And this is W2.n, and this is A2. And when we add them together, we get the mass of the fuel, which is equal to 0 0.03 kilograms per second. So you see that a moving control volume is analyzed exactly the same way as a fixed control volume. The only difference is that we replace this V right here with W or a relative velocity.